Hello lovely internet strangers. This is going to be a bit of a different video for me. I've never really talked about this kind of topic before, although it does involve Jordan Peterson, so that is sort of tangentially related to my brand so far. I'm sure any of you who follow Peterson have heard about his ordeal coming off of long-term benzodiazepine use. This video is not meant to diminish what Peterson went through. It's a harrowing tale and it must have been unspeakably difficult to learn of his wife's cancer diet diagnosis, which is what led him to increase his dosage. This is more meant to be an indictment of the medical field, of the limits of expertise, and why I feel it's so important to always do your own research when it comes to your health. I watched Peterson's conversation with his daughter. I also listened to two podcasts from Rebel Wisdom on the topic, one that was shorter and more specifically about Peterson, and one that was a longer conversation with Robert Whittaker who investigates issues related to pharmaceutical usage. And I'm also going to speak from personal experience using psychiatric drugs, benzodiazepines, and SSRIs, and my experience with a close friend of mine for years who was on multiple psychiatric drugs, including benzodiazepines. So he was prescribed a benzo because he was unable to sleep after having a food reaction. I found an article that said he was prescribed clonopin specifically. He said he was prescribed two a day at 0.25 milligrams. The starting dose is 0.25 milligrams per day, so he was taking 0.5 per day. He said he thought it was a relatively harmless drug. He was taking it in the correct dosage. He didn't really think about it, but then he experienced numbness on one side, feeling detached, but he didn't associate it with the benzodiazepines, and he said he asked his doctor to increase the dosage when his anxiety ramped up due to his wife's terminal cancer diagnosis in April 2019, and then he got more anxious, which he said was uncommon but not unheard of, and then the doctor told him to go off benzodiazepines and triketamine, which he did for a week, which turned out to be a bad idea. And he started tapering off when his wife was in the hospital, but he developed akathisia, this inability to sit still, and he described it as being like hit with a cattle prod. So there were several things that were interesting to me because Peterson is a clinical psychologist. And Peterson mentions several times during his conversation with his daughter that he feels like he should have known. And Michaela says that he's just a psychologist. He's not a psychiatrist, but at least he could admit that, you know, he should keep up on the relevant literature. And if he's a clinical psychologist, he's talking to people who are being treated with psychiatric drugs prescribed either by a psychiatrist or just a medical doctor like I was. And so I would think he would be familiar with benzos because as they mentioned, they're incredibly commonly prescribed. And I'm also surprised that he wouldn't associate any mood symptoms with a psychiatric drug that he had started taking. You know, I wonder if this is the limits of being able to apply your own knowledge that you can use on other people to yourself. Like if someone had come to him and mentioned that they were taking benzos, would he suggest that the benzos might be a source of the alienation that they were feeling from other people? Or would he miss it in his own patient as well? I don't know. I'm going to segue into talking about my personal knowledge of benzos and why this is partially so surprising to me that this happened to him because all of this knowledge about benzos has been known for a long time. I certainly knew this in the early 2000s when my best friend at the time was using both Xanax and Clonopin. And like I said, Peterson was apparently prescribed Clonopin, which is worse than Xanax to come off of because Clonopin has a longer half-life, meaning it takes longer for it to come out of your bloodstream. Xanax has a half-life of about like 11 hours, whereas for Clonopin, it could be 18 to 50 hours. So if you're taking that twice a day and you're taking it for a couple years, because he said he started in, I think, early 2017 and wasn't trying to come off it until summer of 2019. I saw firsthand what clonopin was like. It was definitely a struggle sometimes because as Peterson said, clonopin makes you feel detached from people. And also anytime the dosage increased, that would get worse. The thing that was surprising to me was that Michaela didn't do any research because she's kind of like research girl. And the thing is that none of this knowledge about benzos is like hidden somewhere away from the public. You can do a cursory search on Wikipedia or any of the kind of main stream medical websites and find this information that benzodiazepines are sedatives. You know what happens if you take too many benzodiazepines or if you take benzodiazepines and alcohol? You can enter respiratory depression, aka you can stop breathing. This happened to my friend at a time when we weren't really talking and it was really upsetting to hear that she essentially drank a bunch even though she knew she wasn't supposed to drink at all. Luckily the people she was with managed to keep her alive. So 
So being close friends with someone who was taking benzos for a long period of time was really scary. And I often would think of this line from the TV show, My So-Called Life. I was picking out clothes to wear to your funeral. So I knew very well, just as a teenager, from looking up on the internet, what these drugs were, how dangerous they were, even if I hadn't seen it firsthand from my friend. When I was in college and I was dealing with the worst mental health issues I had faced at that time, I finally went to therapy. I did group therapy first, but it wasn't enough. I went to one-on-one therapy, but I also went and spoke to a doctor and got medication, which I used for a time. She prescribed me Xanax and Sertraline. The Xanax, she only prescribed for me, I think like 30 pills that were supposed to be used only if I felt I was about to have a panic attack because I was having repeated and debilitating panic attacks. It is very good for preventing panic attacks because you will feel its effects immediately. Unlike clonopin, which as they discuss in the video, doesn't really give you any kind of immediate effect. So it's a little bit more of an insidious drug. But my doctor specifically told me that she didn't want to prescribe Xanax for long-term use because it was dangerous, that sertraline was a much better long-term treatment for anxiety. And they mentioned that, you know, the treatment he's been receiving that seems to work has been given by an anesthesiologist. They both kind of seemed to like think that was unusual or, or something like that. But I'm like, benzos are sedatives and some of them are used as anesthetics. They are muscle relaxers. They are sedatives. As I said, if you take too many of them or you combine them with alcohol, you can stop breathing. Their effect on the human brain is related to the same pathways that some anesthetics work on. So it makes much more sense to be treated by an anesthesiologist than say by a psychiatrist. And again, I'm not trying to crap Oliver Peterson. In his conversation with his daughter, he mentions that if you're waiting to learn from people that never make mistakes, you'll still be waiting essentially. And he's never pretended that he was perfect. You know, he wrote the book for himself as well. And I totally am down with that. But it should be a little bit frightening to people that someone who worked in clinical psychology and as he mentioned, specifically studied alcoholism in depth when he was in grad school and also studied barbiturates and benzodiazepines because they are all sedatives. The fact that that man didn't know the medical information that has been available for decades is a little frightening. And given that even my college campus doctor didn't want to refill my prescription for Xanax and prescribe them on an as needed basis to sort of get me through while I was starting therapy. And I'm also really surprised by that doctor telling him to just go cold turkey off of benzos because that is incredibly dangerous and that doctor should know that. You cannot just go cold turkey off of benzos, especially not off of clonopin, especially not after you've been taking it on a regular basis for two years. They say they're making this video to spread awareness, but I really don't know how much of a difference it will make. Michaela linked multiple articles in the description of that video of celebrities whose deaths involved benzos like Heath Ledger and Amy Winehouse, and there's many more. I highly encourage all of you to watch Rebel Wisdom's conversation with Robert Whitaker, which I will link in the description below, because he talks about how he's been working on this issue for a long time, and although it's fun to be kind of like fighting this underdog fight, it's also really disheartening because there doesn't seem to be much progress made because of all the incentive structures in place in the medical field to keep prescribing these drugs and because of how broken the medical model is of how to treat mental illness that they've taken this like mechanistic approach but their own medical science doesn't show that these treatments work any better than the normal course of the disease. I do think that there are a lot of biological causes for mental illness. I think Michaela is right and this has been demonstrated in my own life that diet plays a huge part in mental health issues whether it's specific foods, whether it's how much you eat and when. Sleep also plays a huge part, but the you have a chemical imbalance in your brain thing is not borne out by even the literature itself, and this has been known for a while, but it's not what's being told to the public. I do think that hormonal imbalances can have an impact on mental health. We're starting to learn a lot more about the effect of the birth control pill on women's mental health. Also, cortisol, the stress hormone, can have a huge impact on your mental health. So I want to be hopeful that Peterson's experience and the fact that he has such a large reach that him talking about this will make some kind of impact, but I don't know that it will. I mean, I hope that it helps some random people out there who come across the video and in the future, if they're ever in the situation to be prescribed benzos, they think very seriously before they take those kinds of drugs on a regular basis for more than a two
two week period. Something interesting that Robert Whitaker mentions in his Rebel Wisdom interview is that a lot of people don't know this, but this has been known for a while and I've known this for a while, that oftentimes taking these psychiatric drugs can exacerbate the issue. They can make you more depressed. They can make you more anxious, which was exactly what Peterson found when he increased his dosage of clonopin. And Robert Whitaker does a good job of explaining why that is from a scientific perspective, how benzos work in the brain. He discusses how the brain is an adaptive organ. So when you introduce drugs that try to make changes, the brain adapts and essentially you're messing with the brain's natural mechanisms and some of those changes can be long-term to permanent. This is why people can have such a hard time going off of certain drugs. And I'll make just a small comment on sertraline, which was the other drug that I said I took, which is an SSRI. I definitely noticed as my dosage increased that I did not feel better beyond a certain point, but I needed to increase my dosage to try to keep the level of the effect that had been achieved. At a certain point, you adapt, right? Like your brain adjusts to what it's being given. The more I took, the more zombie-like I felt. Like, yes, I wasn't anxious, but I also didn't feel anything. I think I remember Dave Rubin actually talking about taking an SSRI for a long time and realizing it was an issue when someone he knew died and he did not have the appropriate emotional reaction to that event. I can definitely imagine that happening on that particular drug for sure. I think I took that drug for a maximum of two years, maybe. Then I just went cold turkey off of it, which probably wasn't the smartest idea, but it's not nearly as dangerous as with benzos. I just didn't see where it was going to go. Increasing the dosage was making me feel more zombie-like and there's a maximum dosage you can reach. And I didn't like the idea of having to take a psychiatric drug every day for the rest of my life. So I decided to figure out something else to help me. And I ended up turning to Zen Buddhism, not as a religion, but as a kind of replacement for cognitive behavioral therapy, which was the modality that I was exposed to at my college campus. And it worked really, really well. I stopped having panic attacks for a few years until they came back because life. I also leaned really heavily on exercise, which is very protective for mental health, at least for me. And whenever I slip with exercise, things tend to go south. I just wanted to comment on this because I've been a fan of Peterson over the years. And this was an experience that spoke to me personally, both from my own experience with benzos and from my teenage years and being friends with someone who was taking these drugs. Listen to Peterson. Benzos are incredibly dangerous. Think very, very hard before taking them for more than two weeks. I may speak more about mental health topics in the future, particularly if I finally talk about my experience with hormonal birth control pills because those have a huge impact on mental health. Let me know below if you like this video, if you liked hearing my thoughts on these kinds of topics because I have a lot of thoughts and a lot of them kind of go contrary to the mainstream. And I find when the woke set talks about mental health, Health, I get really, really irritated. I could talk for a while about my time in the trenches on Tumblr with the blind leading the blind when it came to mental health. But regardless, this is where I will leave you. If you like this video, please give it a like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. And I hope to have more content for you very soon.